is Samuel Big Hands. six-week-long tour, um, and I went all over the country, and I was with two bands, and there was a lot of promotion. There's only one company that tours bands through Turkey, so if you go, you get the same promotion that like, Lady Gaga gets, which means that like my face is on every wall, every bus, every bus stop, every poster, everything, every poster in a bar, for six months before I even get to the country. So when you get there, the, the, the reaction to that is that you play in front of like 2,000 screaming fans every night girls in the front crying like you're Michael Jackson. No one speaks English. So for me, it hits this thing where I'm like, okay, this means that that doesn't, like everything I've done to get myself here in this place really has nothing to do with why these people appreciate me. It's just because they gave me this thing, you know? So, so like you, can, you could get up there and you could be doing like armpit farts and girls would be like, oh, oh. It wouldn't matter. So it gets you, to this headspace where you understand that like you're just kind of doing this job. Now, not everybody on the tour felt that way. There were definitely people who got there and got these, these screaming fans and were just like, oh, finally people understand me. And, and this one particular night we're in this place called Diyarbakir, Turkey, and Diyarbakir, Turkey is like two hours from Iraq. It's over the hills from, from Syria. It's a very devout and very serious and conservative place where like, there's men with big mustaches here and here, and the scowls in their face, and all the women are in burkas, and everyone's got a machine gun in the street, no one's over five foot eight, the machine guns are all like, my head is a six two. <laughs> it's a very serious, serious place to tell you not to leave the hotel before you, uh, at night. So, so we were playing, and the guy that goes on after me, his band's playing, he leaves the stage, he comes back on, and he literally has wrapped a towel around his head. Yeah, and, it's, and, and he's got another towel in front of his face, and he's doing this fake belly dance. Now, I don't, there's not a lot of times, I think, not a lot of people that get to actually look out and see how they'll die. <laughs> but I know how I'll die because of this guy. So after the show, I'm like, hey man, I just take him aside, I'm like, you know, just so you know, like, Towelhead in this part of the world, it's a pretty serious curse. And he's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, oh, I do though. And he's like, they knew I didn't mean it like that. And I was like, well, oh, I'm a minority, and I know that you, you did mean it that way. And they didn't know that. <laughs> I don't say any of this to him because the whole idea is to get him to stop. So um, he curses me out in front of a big group of people. Uh, and here's the thing. I have a really bad temper, but I don't want to go to Turkish prison. And I don't want to get kicked off this tour. This is only two weeks into a six-week tour. So I have to make sure he does not do this again, or else we're all dead. <laughs> um, machine guns in the street, for really real. Um, so. So at the hotel, I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and then I just go on and knock on his door, and I'm like, I'm going to hit him in this really personal way, you know, I'm just going to sort of like explain myself and just, we're going to have a talk, and it's going to go really well. Here's another thing, just a quick aside, it has nothing to do with anything except the situation. If they knew that this man with the towel and the, this was like, was Jewish? Oh my God. <laughs> so we, uh... I knock on his door, and uh, he answers the door, and he's like, rrr, rrr, and I go, hey, um, listen, just about early, I just want to, you know, just want to have a little talk and say, you know, I don't mind if we disagree, that's perfectly normal, it's the American way, but the trick is I can't have you speak to me in that tone of voice. And he goes, well, you're going to have to think about how you talk, and this is when I just lose my shit, um, and I just kind of said, this isn't a conversation, this is me explaining to you how you won't talk to me. And he goes, oh, good night, and starts to slam the door. And I put my foot in the door and give him a look that I can't really do right now because I'm not furious with rage. Um, but it goes like this. The foot hits the door, I look him in the eye, and he audibly farts. <laughs> with an implication that maybe more was happening. <laughs> and um, I say, yeah. And he just, and I let my foot out, so that's my out the door, and I say, uh, hey, I'll see you in the morning. And then a little while later, I'm in my room, 
And the phone rings, and I pick it up. Hey, this is your old buddy. And I just hung up. We never had any more problems for the rest of the tour. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes bullying is okay. 